Right, question away. What's Bertie the bed bug? <laughs> Bertie the bed bug. Do you know that's her bed bug's name? One of them's called Bertie. We've got like a whole family of them. Because they thought I was seeing stuff. Because I was sitting in a public hallway because I couldn't sit in my flat no more. So they said that was mad, like sort of uh, mental, mentally, not mentally able to cope on my own. And that they had to section me on the section three. And they concluded was that I'm paranoid about bed bugs. This is the world's oldest psychiatric institution. It used to be known as Bedlam, a place we hid those we called mad. We need some medication. Now known as the South London and Maudsley, Andrew, I need to speak to you. it treats 50,000 patients a year. Any sign that you shit yourself? I, I don't think so. And numbers are rising. <laughs> the staff and patients open their doors to show us what Bedlam Ooh. is like today. Fifty years ago, you'd rarely see someone with mental illness out and about. They were locked up in Victorian asylums. I'm going on the X Factor. And Britain's got talent. For going on there, there's no talent and I will win it. Gracefully. Today, here in South London, Hiya. almost ten times as many people are treated in the community as in hospital. They're our neighbours and live all around us. Tamara, a mum of two, is one of 6,000 patients treated in the borough of Lewisham. She has um, persistent delusional disorder and the persistence is about bedbugs. And she brought a small tube with some dead bedbugs in it. So there is no doubt that there are bedbugs in her flat. But what the patient imagines is that the bed bugs are behind her eyes and in places that it's physically impossible for them to be. More than a thousand community patients in Lewisham live with psychosis. It means they can lose contact with reality, hear voices, suffer hallucinations or delusions. They leave um, residue, like slimy stuff. No, that's not varnish. See, I mistake stuff, but see this all here, that's where they've been, here, and there, there's a uh, bed bug stain. I had to pull the carpets up because they were in my carpets. And this room used to be my room, not anymore though. We moved upstairs and then I started going out in the public hallway around Christmas time. So what would you do? You'd sleep out there? I'd just sit out there, listen to my music, up all night. Would the neighbours complain or what? Yeah, they all complained. So they sort of caught me on CCTV camera, undressing myself on public hallway. But I said I had no choice, because I had to, I couldn't get dressed in my own flat anymore. That's why I did it. Is there CCTV cameras out there? Yes, there is. So they looked on there and they saw me sitting out there daily, night times. I was just sitting, listening to my music, enjoying myself, you know, in, enjoying the calm atmosphere around me.
Tamara ended up being sectioned, her first admission to a psychiatric hospital. But as we discover, every day she walked a tightrope, unsure whether she'd end up having to go back. In that way, Tamara's like many patients looked after by Jim, a social worker with the community mental health team. Run by the council and the trust, it looks after 350 patients. Her house is the one behind that tree, where the blue car is. If Jim kept them well, they kept their independence. This was care in the community. You feel a bit like a detective sometimes. Yeah, that's, that's very much part of what we do, I think. You're trying to elicit symptoms sometimes. Other times you're just trying to find out if someone's alive or not. This is Ray, Bermondsey born and bred. He went to the same school as Mad Frankie Fraser. Five months ago, he had to take his son Lloyd into a psychiatric hospital. He'd been hearing voices. I was terribly worried about him, you know. Getting in trouble or not? What was in trouble? Well, I was in a lot of trouble. Different things. Getting in trouble with the police all the time, weren't they? I've got nicked trying to nick a, a turbine, a wind turbine, off of a boat. Was that your illness? Yeah, you? that was the illness, yeah. It was, well, what was it telling you to do? Well, well, what it is, I hear a voice, uh, and it's quite a specific. Martha, her name is, she's 30. She's got quite a specific, you know, character. She's got a character as well. And, um, and she had me running around London at various addresses in my dad's car. And I just got the ump because I was using all the petrol and upsetting the ozone. So, so I wanted to get something like a turbine to power the flat, you know, like a wind turbine. I know it sounds crazy. How long have you heard the voice? Uh, three years and four months. But yeah, she's talking to me, just blabbing on. What she just told you? She's told me she's she not she doesn't like the camera for being here just now. Why? Just I don't know. Why? Why don't you like them? She just doesn't like them. She doesn't want to say. She doesn't like the, she doesn't like the cameras. She's not not she's not uncomfortable with it that much, as long as I'm all right. Sometimes you can hear him talking out here. Yeah, sometimes. I don't take the notes because I'm used to it. Yeah. But he's talking. He's obviously, I should imagine he's talking to the voice. Yeah, I am. I mean, I, I don't, I don't say nothing because I, I wouldn't, you know, I, I wouldn't embarrass anybody. So I just, I just sit there. But he's okay. He's wanting a cup of tea. He says, "Want a cup of tea to me?" I say, "Yeah." He says, "Oh, coffee." I will say, "Yeah." Then he, then he's. Going, <laughs> yeah, he is. <laughs> you can hear him sort of talking to it. You know, I sometimes hear him. He sleeps in the bedroom where I am, one of my main one, and I can hear him. <laughs> he goes. You know, yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, and he goes, yeah, 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 and then he goes to sleep, you know what I mean? But I, it doesn't worry me now. It did at first because I thought, well, you never know, do you? I don't know. Yeah, you know, if you take notice of it, you know, I don't know. He takes notice of it, so it could be anything, couldn't it? I didn't want him to say, well, get up and hit your dad over the head or kill your dad. Yeah, it doesn't I'm, work like You that. know what I'm saying? I know it sounds silly, but you, you wouldn't have no chance, would you? To your... Um... Dad's going away? Yeah, so I'm staying here for the weekend and uh, I feel a bit edgy. Yeah. But, it, but I feel all right, it's all right. I just don't know, it's paranoia. So it's, it's mainly paranoia. So I'm just a bit paranoid. I just leave the telly on, really, and watch. Sky's got all the Sky channels. This is the first time Ray has left Lloyd alone in the house since he was discharged from hospital. Are you parked the car up, though? Yeah, yeah. 
The illness brought uncertainty into their home. They were trying to understand what schizophrenia meant for both of them. Keep in touch, will you? It's just a matter of staying stable. You know, it feels un unstable. And especially with this thing going on in Woolwich. And you hear a lot about schizophrenics on the news. That he was schizophrenic and he murdered someone and stuff like that. They're going, sir. What, do you mean things like that make you feel paranoid? It makes me feel, out? yeah, it makes me feel worse like, in case I could do that, you know? Uh, looking forward to having a good chinwag with her. I haven't been on my own for ages, you know? <laughs> I don't think it must seem crazy. relapse among psychotic patients. I, I don't know what condition she's in, whether she's near to a, a complete relapse, and what her mental state is. I mean, those things are ongoing risks for her. Are you a bit concerned? Yeah, yeah. Around a third of Jim's patients refuse to engage with him. Tamara is one he needs to visit several times a week. She can change by the day. Hiya, Tamara. I've come to get you for the meeting with Dr Verla. Oh, OK. You all right? Do you want a couple of minutes? No, I'm coming. You all right like you are? I think... Oh, you want to get dressed first. He doesn't give me the right medication anyway. Well, that's why he you're coming to... to... going! Well, you need to tell him what you do need, don't you? Sleeping pills! I won't keep you too long and we'll get you straight back here. I want to take one a night. Otherwise, if it's too low, I'm going to take too many. And then I've got to wait another three weeks before I get another load. OK, well, it's, you, you're going to have to have that discussion with him. I keep having discussions with him. He doesn't seem to listen. Well, we've got to get it right, haven't we? He seems to not get it right, though, this doctor. You've got to give him a chance tomorrow. All right, then you go. Keeping Tamara well is complicated by her long-term addiction to speed. It's likely to have been the trigger for her delusions. Hi, Hi. Good to see you. Good to see you. Huh? Yeah? Yeah. Okay. I know we sort of talked about the, the speed, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah, what, how much do you spend these days? 70 a week. Oh. It's a, it's a bit more, isn't it, than, than I thought it used to be a little bit less, is that right? Yeah, but what was the point giving up? It takes my pain away. But let's talk about medication now, because I'm not talking about speak no more. That's just my Okay, yeah, let's, let's keep it out, yeah. I don't get out of my bed if I don't have my speed. I don't do shopping, I don't do nothing with myself as so long as I've got my speed. I, I rely on my speed on a lot of stuff. I've lost my kids into foster care. Yeah, they're in foster care now. I just can't cope anymore. So with the speed, it numbs my pain inside. And when I'm normal, I get upset about the kids, definitely. Because I do miss him. She knows she's got a drug problem, but she also believes with her heart that it helps her. And the drugs she chooses would not be ones that we think do help her. But she disagrees with that fervently. We have, I think we still have a duty to work with that. 
you want to get it for me, Jim? Yeah, shall I? If I leave it here. He's a nice bloke, Jim, isn't he? Yeah, he is. Do you look after you? Yeah. I think he's quite fond of you. Oh, do you? <laughs> no, not in that way. <laughs> Just fond of you in like he likes you. Ah. Oh. <laughs> That's nice. I'm noticing that. You know when you're out and about, you wonder what other people think of you. No, because I don't care. Some chat me up, some rob me. Some might ignore me and not notice me. It depends on how I look. A lot of people are scared of mentally ill in the community, aren't they? Yeah, I'm not. Because I know they're not... I've been in the hospital with them. They're not... They're not... They're harmless, really. Tamara had lived in the shadow of mental illness most of her life. Her mum had been with psychiatric services for years. Now she'd had to say goodbye to her own kids. They'd been in care for five months and she knew there was little chance of them coming home. But despite everything, she refused to let her illness beat her down. Others were still struggling to come to terms with it. Lloyd has been on his own all weekend. It's the first time he's managed it since he left psychiatric hospital. How you been? Yeah, not too bad. I, I did pop out and get some cigarettes. And How was that? Paper. It was all right. It was it, it, I, I was pleased I did it when I got back. I you know what I mean? Were you worried when you were going out? Uh, at first, yeah. <laughs> but once I got out, once I got out the front door, I was fine. It's just the first couple of steps. Just the first few steps. Yeah. Lloyd was unusually open about his illness, as if telling us helped him unburden himself. He was keen that we see him talking to Martha, the voice. Uh, I've, I did a bit of a, a video report, and I've tried to capture some of the schizophrenic voices while... Should have a look? Yeah, yeah, OK. It's 10 o'clock. Quarter to ten, he's been gone, my dad's been gone five hours now, no, not more than that. Eleven hours, and I'm feeling all right. Just think I'm sweet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just getting you to hear her voice, hear us when she speaks outwards. <laughs> You're a silly girl. <laughs> Sad little lad for the man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't bother Bosky from the basketball. <laughs> He's from the basketball. You from the basketball? I didn't think so. <laughs> She's not from the basketball. <laughs> Please forgive me. <laughs> uh, he first became ill in June 2007. At that time, I don't know exactly, but he was 37, 38. So nothing before that? No, nothing that we are aware of. And there were, you know, stressful, quite significant life events. It was, um, you know, the separation from, from his uh, girlfriend. And the following year, it was the, the death of his mother. So before, there was no, no, no mental health issue? Is that no. unusual? 
No, no, no. You can have first episode of schizophrenia in people who are 60 years old or so. It can happen. I don't know what people are going to think about the paranoid schizophrenics in the community. Usually when you hear of schizophrenics, they've usually chopped someone up or they've usually shot someone. So it makes me quite worry because I don't know my own mind. His anxiety symptoms have deteriorated as well markedly. One element that's playing a part in this has been his increased use on, in alcohol. So is the drinking, is that him medicating himself? Yes. We discussed about the harmful effect of alcohol and uh, he thought that it was better wine rather than beer. So in fact, he increased and, you know, started drinking a couple of a bottles of wine, you know, a, a, a day. Because I don't feel stable, that's why. And drink helps me to stabilise myself. But the problem with that is, is once you drink too much, if I had three pints, it would be fine, but I don't, I'd have six pints. Or something, you know, or nine pints. I see Lloyd. Lloyd was all too aware of what the schizophrenic label meant. He locked himself away and drank through the worry. It was his way of dealing with it. But it couldn't go on forever. I'm just ringing to see if you've had any recent contact with Rosemary Johnson since our last attempted visit. Jim's concerns about Rosemary's mental health are growing. Right. Today, psychiatrist Dr Werner is visiting with him. Jim wants an expert opinion on whether she's relapsing. But he'll only get that if she answers the door. Hello, Rosemary. Can we come and have a talk to you? Rosemary, you know Dr. Werner. You know Dr. Werner, don't you? I can't, Rosemary. I've got to go to the office. You said that to me last time, and I came back and you weren't there. You know I'm worried about you, don't you, Rosemary? I'm dressed in. I don't know you. I don't know you. I don't know You know Dr. Krishna, don't you? I don't know your name. Rosemary, I don't know your age. I'm very there. So, could you, like, wait ten minutes? I'm dressed in. Rosemary, that's... It's not going to get anywhere. She's going to keep this. We can't talk to her in that state, really. When this happened last year, just prior to her coming into hospital, she was knocking on the doors of the next-door neighbour, who has two young children. She was disturbing the man upstairs by doing the same kind of thing. Hello, Rosemary. I you know where I live. You know I, I, you know I know where you live, don't you? You don't know where I live. Are your your you name is Rosemary. I found it. I found it. I found where I live. Because it's on our, on our right. records yeah, in the yeah, office, Rosemary. You don't know. And you know what I else I know? I didn't tell you where I live. I know that you're known uh, so as Kim. You, I, I know, I know. Should I call you so, Kim or so, Rosemary? Okay, what is it? What is your name, my dear Jim? Jim. My name's Jim. Uh, what? Jim Thurkle. There we are. Okay. Um, what That's is my it, name. What is, the mid, what is the middle name? What is the middle name? My middle name? Yeah, middle. George. <laughs> I don't believe that. You don't? Okay, you know who I was named after? I'm old. I'm old. You can say that. You put that by the door. How old am I? How old are you? <coughs> I'm okay. not sure I can disclose I, I that in knew, public. I see <laughs> oh, you you could you could ask me any other question you want to, Rosemary. Where are you off to now? Can I come and see you tomorrow? Uh, not tomorrow, Monday, I mean. What time, Monday? He's licked it. Jim was forever hunting Rosemary down. It said something much bigger about community care. It only worked if patients wanted it to work too. There does come a time when, as last year, it was in her best interests to get her into hospital. And the only way of doing that was on a section of the Mental Health Act last year. And I think we may well be heading to that stage again now. It is 
going to be a hot weekend. We started with sunshine across many areas, but quite a bit of mist and fog for England and Wales. Around the London area, we can see... Well, we're waiting for police because she's not going to come willingly, I think. Jim has reached the end of the line with Rosemary. Rosemary? A patient with paranoid schizophrenia. Thank you very much indeed. Bye-bye. It's the power to remove someone's liberty. And there isn't any greater power, I don't think, under the law. And it's not something we treat lightly. I'm just waiting for police because she's not... We're doing a Section 3 assessment, but she's not going to come willingly. There's a bit of me that thinks, why are we going to this length when she is leading the life she chooses? But ultimately, our assessment is that she doesn't have capacity and that she could be an awful lot better in terms of her mental health. We've tried all the other alternatives. Front door, her front door. Yeah, the front door. Her front door. Yeah, do you want to? Actually, I. Well, I'm just going to slip that up probably. Hello, Rosemary. To section Rosemary, Jim and two doctors need to be satisfied. It's in the interests of her health, her safety, or to protect others. Hello, Rosemary. Go, I'm Rosemary. Sitting there, just go. Okay, so we're going to complete section three. Um, we're just doing the papers now and then take her to triage ward, Lewisham Hospital. Okay. Section three of the Mental Health Act. Was she section last year? Wasn't she? she was section last year, which was in October. Okay, so. the paperwork. Thank you very much. Under indeed. section three, they can detain and admit Rosemary to hospital against her will for up to six months. Once in hospital, Rosemary will not have the right to refuse medical treatment. Do you always feel comfortable um, with what you've done? I don't always feel comfortable, no, not at all. But I know there are situations where there is no alternative, and today was one example of that. There is a bit in front of Rosemary that knows she's not well. Quite often, that's the, the telling point in assessments like this, where the person themselves votes with their feet. Real young style now full like the Bulgar Bana In a leather trench coat, me dung in a Milano Black leather felt disguise, me maskina She a dark light night, me a tricky and keen This hype for all the drinks, so we got it, they can see now From my bus, the door, I whistle, guys, I team up Whenever we arranged to meet, you could never be quite sure which tomorrow was going to turn up. Yeah, I have to get some makeup down the boat. Yeah? Yeah, that's it really. Oh, I've got some. Well, we've got some. It's your birthday. Only small. You forgot, you didn't have your birthday. Oh, thank you. I can eat them. Thank you. This is my first uh, birthday present I've got. Is it? Yeah. Did you end up doing anything? No, I went straight to bed. 
But those tablets uh, Dr. Fernand sorted out for me do work now. On days like these, when Tamara was well, it was difficult to imagine her stuck on a psychiatric ward. You're in recovery and you're getting better and better all the time. On paper, it? yeah. Yeah. And you're on paper. <laughs> on paper. I don't, don't feel, feel like, like it. Not at the moment. I've had a bad couple of days. And I've been hearing the voices a lot more. You know, the last couple of days I've been arguing with them and just. And, and, and I, I can't win. I can't win because the voices are there all the time. Lloyd was struggling just to make it out of the house. He'd come to see his social worker, Emma, but he didn't look well. I just want to curl up and lay down all day. I just, I don't want to go out. I'll get up and I think I want to go back to bed and I can't sleep. Have you, just... been, have you been drinking? No I, haven't dr no, I haven't drunk. I went, I went out for a drink on Sunday with my dad. Yeah. It might be the effects of the vodka. I had quite a few vodkas. What's quite a few? Half a, half a bottle, I suppose. I've not been drinking every day. I, was, I felt like a drink yesterday. The voices, his anxiety and his drinking were all starting to catch up with him. So I'm just worried about what's going to happen to me mentally. the next couple of years. I mean, my dad's not getting any younger. And just what, what I'm going to do, and now I'm going to feel in the, in the six months' time or a year's time, you know, I don't know. It's not, it's not nice not being well. Jim's just been called by Tamara. Her long-term partner has walked out on her. The same thing happened six months ago, triggering her last admission into psychiatric hospital. You sounded really upset this morning. I am. I'm completely upset. Yeah, I know. You know, he keeps moving in and out. He keeps leaving me problems. So why did Matt move the bed in here? Because he had enough of me. He just wanted to be on his own. He just wanted to be away from me, he said, because yeah. I called him a All right. And this place is just getting worse now. No, I'm quite worried about you at the moment. No, I ain't going to no hospital. I'm fine. In you, that don't, you don't want to go there? Oh, no. Oh, no. I want to move out of here. I know. That's what I want. I want to live a normal life. And I'm living a normal life is in a normal property mm. with no bugs that attack you and have sore lips with it because of it. Sore lips because of the attacking the bed you? Bugs, yeah, they're all uh, like around my face and that. Yeah. And then when I blow them out my nose and that, they land on my lips and then they're on my lips and attacking my lips. They're multiplying. Mm. Every day they lay eggs, 300 twice a day. Yeah. And they don't miscarry, neither. Mm. They're very fertile. You know, you don't get bed bugs that miscarries. Mm. <laughs> well, I'm quite concerned about you at the moment. Oh, no, I'm fine. Yes. Well, I need to let Bridget. Dr Vernon know. Yeah. OK. OK. He will want to see you. Yes. And then we'll and all meet up. Bed bugs are not mental, they are physical. They are here, in reality. It's not mentally. I'm not seeing things. They are here. I'm sure Dr. Werner will want to have that discussion with you. So, no mental uh, health, uh, health hospital will help me. Would you want to go to the hospital? No! I can't handle that again. The food was nice. Thank you very But that wasn't. The noise and Edna singing Jesus songs all night. No! I want to sleep. Mm. And, a big, and have peace. No. <sighs> Who's the mess? Right, see you later on tomorrow. Thank you. Bye. Bye. She's not well, is she? 
I've not seen her as bad as this. Really? Yeah. I mean, she was on a par last time she came in hospital, but there's, she's more disturbed by it. Do you think you might have to go back to the hospital? Oh, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> it's how, how soon, really. She's not going to agree to it, of course. She said that quite clearly just then. I was just testing the water to see if she might go in informally. But she doesn't think she's got a mental illness. The last time we saw Lloyd, he hadn't seemed well either. Now, two weeks on, he seemed to have disappeared. We couldn't get hold of him or his dad, Ray. Something must have happened. Psychiatrist Dr. Werner has come to see if Tamara's paranoia might require another admission to a psychiatric ward. Hiya, Tamara. Is it okay for us? Well, you didn't come in on Monday when we were due to see you. Okay if we come in now? Yeah. We've got the film crew with us. Is that all right? Hiya. Hiya. You sure that's all right? Yeah. Mind the bed. You're still sleeping on there? She said. You're still in there? Okay. How is things? How are you sort of, you know? I'm living with bed bugs. Mm. So I ain't too happy. Mm. At all. Leaving me in this shit hole. Are they somewhere around? I mean. They're just in my bed. Do you want me to have a look? No. No? Okay. You have not been thinking about sleeping outside of. Of, no. Of the flat, yeah. No. no. We last time we met, we gave you sort of these new tablets at a bigger dose. Yeah, they help me. Yeah. A lot better now. Okay. You seem to be more calm. I mean, I can understand that. that you know, it's, it's a lot of stress was 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 what's, what's going on. You know, monthly, you know, and, and you're sort of being stressed out by the bed bugs. You seem to be more settled. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for seeing us tonight. Thank you. I'll see you next week. Tomorrow, are you sure you're all right about us being in tonight? Yeah, that's all right. Yeah. Remember about the film, don't you? Yes. Know all that. Yes. Cool. I'll give you a call later in the week, yeah? Yes. At the end of the week. Okay. The heightened delusions of a few days ago seem to have gone. What's your level of concern now, Jim? Slightly lower, I'd say. Yeah, I think she's. I'm surprised she's coping as well as she is. Although, when you look at that flat and the condition of her, you think she's not coping at all. But in a comparison with what Tamara has been like before, then I think she's not doing so badly. So we've got to balance our judgment on where she is on that scale. For now, at least, it means Tamara doesn't need to go into hospital. Oh, hi, Kate, it's Fidel here. Uh, any further news regarding Lloyd? We finally got word on Lloyd. It wasn't good. He'd been admitted to intensive care and was in a critical condition. He developed pancreatitis, a condition often caused by alcohol abuse and sometimes fatal. He was binge drinking. I mean, clearly he's got a problem with alcohol, you know. He's in a serious condition. 
what we do hope is that he gets better, you know, and that he go, he goes through this. But uh, again, the you know his physical illness are very, very, very severe indeed. Could he die? Yeah. Yeah. It's not bad. Mm. Yes. After four weeks of treatment and medication, thank you. Yeah, come in. Thank you. You're welcome. Rosemary is back home. Oh, he's, he's, he was like one of the greatest yeah. on the planet. I think there's many who would argue with you there. <laughs> they <laughs> no, might with Rod Stewart, though. Should it, should it. You know, How are you feeling? I'm well, you know, because lately I've just felt a bit better now. And good. Then. That's good to hear. Just felt a bit How better. are you sleeping at the moment? I'm sleeping fine. You're sleeping all right? Sleeping all right. Okay, that's good. Do you feel... You know, the Queen feature I bought it today in Oh, Greenwich. that's lovely. It was only 30 pence. You know, just You've got so and many got, pictures you know in what? here. I've got, I've got Prince Andrew and Sarah I know. Pattinson. I just need the Queen Mummy now. Sit so at Christmas and listen to the royalty speech of Majesty's speech. Right. She's yeah. an important lady. Yeah, sure. I, you know, I like Almost as important as you. I <laughs> <laughs> But you look really well. Thank you. And you feel feel okay? I'm fine, thank you. Good. All fine, right. thank you. Because I first knew you when you were in your last uh, place, didn't I? Days. Nobody. So, well, you, I don't know how you know me. You just <laughs> pop up I track you down. <laughs> don't I? <laughs> I don't know. You know, you, know, you, just, um, you just like him. Um, I know. <laughs> and you're the queen. <laughs> you're the, you're the queen. <laughs> All right, so I'll be in touch. Okay. And you let me know if there's anything else I can do for mm -hmm. you. Okay. See you next time. See you next time. Take I'm care. See me again. I will. Next Have no time fear. When you age your <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye. She's much more uh, affable, amenable. I really like her, she, and she's such a warm-hearted person. And it's really good to see her with her personality back. Rosemary struggled to accept her mental illness. She wasn't alone in that. It meant she'd probably always end up in and out of hospital. But when she was back in her castle, enjoying life, it seemed to make sense of what community care was all about treating those who are mentally ill with humanity as people like us. It was the same with Tamara. She was chaotic, sometimes disturbed, but in between, she was funny and happy. But you slept. From Sunday yeah. through till Tuesday? Yeah. Yeah, I'm realising. <laughs> How did that happen? I, I don't know. I went to the shop. I said, excuse me, what's the day today? He said, date. He said, the date to me. I said, no, the day. Tuesday he goes. I thought, I thought Sunday. <laughs> Jim? Spending time with her. Oh, look at this day. It was difficult to imagine. <laughs> that she was someone we'd have once locked away. I couldn't fucking believe it, you know what I mean? I couldn't get me head around it. Your boy dies before you, you know what I mean? When I went up there was the worst part, when he was in the ICU, because I, I, I thought, well, how the fuck's he in there? You know what I mean? You've got to be really ill, haven't you? When I walked in there, I thought, he ain't going to make this. No way he's going to make this. Oh, fuck me, I couldn't believe it. I just sat there, I just fucking didn't know what to do, did I? I said, I can't believe it. He said, is, you, know, you find it hard. He said, it is hard. 
I mean, I don't mind training. I was praying every fucking night and all. I guess the drink helps you forget about the voices, doesn't it? Oh, I suppose it does, doesn't it? But then, then what happens tomorrow then? Well, you drink again. And then what the day after that, what do you do then? Bollocks, isn't it? Ray had been at Lloyd's bedside every day for seven weeks. Finally, he was out of danger. All right. It can happen to anybody. You could be a millionaire, you could be anybody. And it's, and it's sad, it is sad, but they don't want pity. What they need is someone to care or show your their room, you know what I mean? You haven't. No, that's 10 star. How many? Five kilos. It's not 10 stone. It's a stone. That's what's good still. You can do it with losing. It don't matter, does it? You can afford to lose it. I wish I would lose a few stone. You know, it's what you're a dad, isn't it? You know, anybody would be a dad, can't they? I wish I would lose a few stone. But you know, it's a man, it's, it's a lot of difference being a proper dad, do you know what I mean?